can sense the intensity as they await the arrival of the Tennessee team here at Leland Stadium. a special urgency. Here come the volunteers. Wherever you listen throughout the world, it's football time in Tennessee. What is going on, Facebook? What's up, YouTubes? I tell you what, I've waited a long time to put a show like this together, and I've got a very, very special announcement. A lot of y'all already know what's happening. Uh, we've got a new co-host going to help me out on this channel, a legendary former Vol. Well, let me take that back. He's he's not a former Vol. Once you're a Vol, you're always a Vol. He anchored the defensive line on our national championship year, credited for causing and recovering uh, the fumble on the infamous Sterner fumble against Arkansas. Turn that thing around, and the cheese did the rest, scored. I always knew if we got the ball back, we were going to score. But I'm super excited to introduce to everybody on the Volunteer Road Show, Billy Ratliff, everybody's favorite number 40. How you doing, Billy? Hey, Bobby, I'm doing good, man. I'm just thankful to be on the show, man. This has been something I've always dreamed of doing, man. And, and thanks for having me on, man. I'm glad to be with you, man. Well, we're going to go through a lot of thick and thin together. We've had a lot of great conversations in private, and I've learned a lot of things that I didn't even know. And um, I, I guess I'm going to ask you the first thing I want to ask. I've always wanted to ask it. If you would have told me 21 years ago when I injured my vocal cords because of you um, that I'd be sitting here co-hosting a show with you i would have said you is crazy i would have said there ain't no way billy ratliff billy freaking ratliff but i've got to ask you a question the legend says here's what the legend says that when we had what two minutes left two and a half minutes left in the ball game we didn't convert on fourth down and t was coming off the field and you told him keep your hat on we're getting you the ball back is that true Bobby, that's a hundred percent true, man. You know, that's something, you know, I, I'm not used to losing, you know, at that time, Tennessee, we we were the best in the SEC as well. So and and for us to be losing to Arkansas, plus you got Al Whistle that's chewing my butt off and we, we, we're not even doing anything wrong. We're doing everything right. So our offense is doing bad. And and I remember, you know, we needed to get this ball back. And I remember T going out there, you know, they just know that they're gonna score, but they didn't score. You know, I saw him coming off the sideline with his head down like the game was over. And I was like, T, man, keep your helmet on, man. We about to get this ball back, man. Let's go. And then history came from that, man. We just went out there, did our thing, and the thing, and it happened. You know what I'm saying? A little bit of luck, but it happened. Well, I, I've always heard that. And when, you, when you're thinking about it, I, I remember that game. And I'm thinking, this is it. We had so many close calls that could have changed that season totally around started out right out of the gate against Syracuse pulled that out um then again against Florida I was at that Florida game so I'm I don't know how close I got to players but I was real close to that goal post and that was a great day that was and I see we got crying Ryan let me introduce you to crying Ryan Billy he goes to Farragut now listen to this he goes to Farragut his family's Tennessee fans but I asked him one time, why did you become a Gator fan? He said he liked the colors. Can you believe that? <laughs> oh, man, come on. How did you become a, a Gator fan then? I mean, we got some of the colors, right? Eh? <laughs> That's all right, right? Well, we got a lot of things we've talked about we're going to do, getting some former players on here with us. We just got a lot of ideas, and I can't wait. Um to start doing some of these things and i'm gonna go ahead and announce it um, i'm 90 percent sure we're going to be doing it at a particular location in knoxville i'm still working those details out but i do know one thing me and billy and my boy bvd who got me into this uh billy 
uh, is going to be somewhere in Knoxville doing a live broadcast. And I want everybody to come out there and meet Billy, meet me. I've, I've had a lot of great fans that, that I've got to meet and uh, interact with over the last year and a half. year and a half ago, I was doing this show with a camera phone and a YouTube channel. And I've always thought, wow. I, I had a dream, Billy. I always dreamed big, and I kept knocking on doors. It seemed like I knocked on a thousand doors and didn't get anybody mm -hmm. to answer. And here mm -hmm. we are. We've got a lot of opportunity to do a lot of things for the fans. I've always said this, Billy, and I, you'll hear me say it a bunch. This, this channel is for the fans. It's been built by the fans, and I do it because of the fans. I, I wouldn't be on here without the fans, and I know Billy. I've got to talk to him a lot over the last week and he feels the same way a great humble guy and he's got some war stories but i see i've got a caller uh, anybody wants to call the allied oil and tire hotline the phone lines are open 855-489-7623 they've got locations in omaha wichita des moines kansas city and joplin i use the joplin location sometimes brett black's in here so brett if you're here uh, we're doing you a good job, Brett. But I'm going to bring my mentor and my good friend on. I was hoping he would call. He's the one that got me into it. Big Vol Daddy, we call him BVD. How you doing, BVD? What you got for Billy Ratliff? I know you don't have anything for me, but what you got for Billy Ratliff? And what are you talking about, son? I've always got something from my boy, Catfish. What's going on, Billy? What's going on, Bobby C? Oh, What's man. going on, you two? Everything's great, man. Everything's great, man. How's you doing today? Fantastic, fantastic. Look, I, I'm super excited, uh, looking forward to meeting you the day of the spring game, and i uh, got several questions, you know, that I've got for you. Some of them involving, you know, the 98 season, but a lot of them not involving the 98 season. I'm sure you get, you probably get quizzed to death and asked to death about that game and that season. I, I'm more interested in what you think about the current state of the program, and, and if you had a if you had a say so and and could say anything to Jeremy and the boys, what what your ideas would be? And you know we we can chop that up later. But I'm I'm glad to see you aboard. I look forward to talking to you and working with you. And and uh, happy for my boy Catfish. He I tell you what, there's there's not a lot of people that I know of in my life that that tries harder and knocks on more doors and you know than this guy. And I spent three weeks with him last summer on his truck and just a privilege to get to know him and uh, looking forward to meeting you man and meeting a bunch of people out there wherever we are april 13th well i can't wait to meet you too my man and as far as the team this year man i mean i like the direction we're heading in you know i think we got a pretty good coach over there with coach Ford. you know coach Foreman. you know i think he wouldn't get anybody in there that wouldn't make him look good you know and that's the problem, you know, that's the possibility of, of, of a salesman as well. And I think, you know, we're putting all the right pieces in with all the right coaches right now. You know, I still think we're a couple of, you know, recruiting classes away from being back to where we used to competing in the SEC. And right now I think what Coach Fruit is doing is, is, is laying down a great foundation that's been great so far for him. And he's got a couple of keys in that's coming in this off season with recruits that's going to probably help out right away. And, you know, there's some guys that have been injured that's going to be coming back to compete and hopefully they help us out this season. But I do think that we have the right recipe to, to make the pot grow real soon. Well, I sure hope so. I, you know, I, I, I'm i sure you and Catfish both get tired of having to listen to – people like Ryan and, and all the Alabama fans talk about how things used to be on the Hill. And you guys both know, like I know, it's just a matter of time before Tennessee's kicking everybody's butt in the SEC again. And, uh, and I, I was joking in the comments, but I think I'm really going to, I think I'm really going to make an effort at this. I'd like to try and get a hold of Brandon Burlesworth and get him on my show sometime <laughs> and, and have you, have, have you call in and let you two chop it up a little bit. And for those of you in the chat that don't know who Brandon Burlesworth is, he's the guy that was on the offensive line that day for Arkansas and uh, oh a great, great kid, great guy, I'm sure. And I, and I'm sure if he and Billy knew each other, they'd be great friends. Cause he's just another one of those great guys. But you know, that, 
<laughs> I was curious what you thought about him and, and that day and everything. We'll we'll talk about that later. Well, we could talk okay, about we'll it now. Tell, tell me about tell me about that play. <laughs> that ball was sitting on the ground forever, an eternity when I watched that. Tell everybody, kind of walk through what that about that play. We'll probably talk about this a dozen times in the off season, but not everybody watches every show. But take us through that play. Well, I'll tell you this here, man. You know that guy. You know Brandon Birdsworth was was a great player, man. That we didn't know he really was. You know, if you saw Brandon the way he was dressed, you know he had the big goggles on, and you know had his pads all hanging out to the side. You know, you, you would just think that you're gonna just run through this guy and, and whip his tail all game. But little that I knew, this guy here was probably was the best technique guy I ever heard of. You know. Getting this game, I'm going against this kid, man. And when I say he whooped my tail this whole game, he whooped my tail, man. And I say the only time I got the chance to get him was that last series when we got that ball back, man. And I promise you, man, I thought he gave up. I thought he just took a couple plays off or something, but <laughs> he said he didn't. He tried it all he can to make sure it worked. But I whooped his tail on those last two plays, man, before we got that ball back, man. And and history was made, man. And, and the fact that, you know, when I pushed the guy back and he tripped over the quarterback and, and, and then, you know, Keith Sterner, he fumbled the ball, you know. I can't believe the ball was laying there forever like that, man. It seemed like it was like two or three days that it was sitting there. And, you know, what? I think was with, with defensive linemen, you know, we always dream of scoring touchdowns and all this here. And, you know, I said if I ever get a chance to pick up a ball in my – run into the house because I felt like I was fast enough to get away from people. But at this point, I'm wore out and got a chance to beat Brandon on those plays. I said, I'm just going to jump on this ball and pick it up and I'm going to run to the sideline and just drop it off. And it happened, man. It was crazy. Uh, it happened like that, man. Have you, uh, have you had an opportunity to talk to Clint Sterner since that day? Oh, man, I had talked to Clint, man. It's been forever ago, man. I think it was like right before he had – start doing arena football. It's been a long time since I talked to him, man. Oh, I you know the that. last time I saw him was like this, our last spring game that we had. I think he was here in town, and I didn't get a chance to even go over there and speak to him. So It's been a while, man. I would love to, matter of fact, I would love to even talk to him, see him, man, just to see what he thought about that play his coach called for <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna make that we're gonna make that happen. Don't go anywhere, Billy. I'm gonna give everybody a shout out. It's in Facebook and YouTube. I always do it. My main man, my Patreon member, Shane Bentley. Billy, we got a our our, our only Patreon member is a Georgia fan. And he just sent us a nineteen ninety nine um super chat and he says, Here's the Mr. Routliff. Shouting out a Go Dogs. Well, you'll say a Go Dogs for 1999, won't you, Billy? Can you give him a Go Dogs? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I, I give it to him, man. No dogs, man. <laughs> Got vodka drinker in here, crying Ryan, Ryan Strick. Let's see, I saw Pigs Kid <laughs> Pete, Border Bob. Uh, there was a bunch of. Of course, we got BVD in here. Um, the crowing. Don't Cop. forget our man Flint. Flint, uh, I didn't see him, but we got Young Blood Sports Talk. Christian Skelton is in here. Flint, Gate City Blue Devil, Michael David. How you doing, guys? I see y'all. I just can't do the shout outs like I used to. I've got all these things going. And over here on Facebook, we got Faith Bidwell. She's followed Volunteer Roadshow for a long time. And my boy, Matthew Haskett. Haskett. He lives over there in North Carolina, but he's one of the biggest Tennessee fans there is. And Matt Barnett is in here. Glad glad y'all are over there on the uh, Facebook side. I see my man Big Dog Brett. He does a um, a Georgia YouTube channel. He's in here. How you doing, Brett? But I, I got to ask you a question. I spent a long time on the truck with, with BBD, and we talked about a lot of, you know, top five players of different positions. But as far as you are concerned, who who would you say was maybe the most underrated and underappreciated player other than yourself that you got to play with? Oh man, there's a lot of those guys man I played with man. I mean, I, I'll tell you this here: Ray Knox Thompson that I played oh, with yeah. defense man. 
Oh, you know, yeah. I still say he was one of the most underrated linebackers, man, for the size, the speed, you know, the way he would just knock people's heads off. I mean, you're talking 6'2", 6'3", 200 pounds wet. And when I say this guy would knock your head off, man, he would take it off if he could, man. And he had a couple of years in the NFL, but I still think he was very unappreciated as, as, as a linebacker when he came out of the University of Tennessee, man. Oh, I agree. I remember Ray. Yeah, Ray Knock was he was one of my favorites because he ended up with the Arizona Cardinals. And uh, I'm with you, Billy. He was a I, I used to actually his nickname for me was Ray Knock Your Head Off Thompson. And <laughs> yeah, that that dude was he was every bit as good, I think, as a player maybe as Al Wilson. He just wasn't quite the motivator that Al was. Yeah. And I, you know, you're obviously know more about that stuff than we do. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's true, man. I mean, he was one of those guys, man. He wasn't very well. To this day, he's still not a very outspoken person. But, you know, when you see Ray Knox, you know he means business. Just by that look he gives you, you're just like, you're just like oh, no, we're not messing with Ray Knox. <laughs> and he hasn't changed a bit at all, man. I, I, we were talking, uh, I believe it was yesterday, uh, Billy, uh, on the phone, and you gave me some information that I didn't know. I'm sure BVD might know this, but there were two – uh, offensive players that got drafted and had a long career in the NFL on the offensive side of the ball, one on the line and one as a tight end. But could you tell people who those two guys are and that you got to play with them on the defensive line? Oh, uh, man, yeah, I still talk about this when people always ask about these guys, man. For instance, I'll give you on the first one, um, Jason Witten, man. You know, no, nobody – Remember that Jason, he was actually a defensive end, man, when he came to Tennessee. You know, mm-hmm. I remember him playing defensive end. I mean, he was a good one, don't, don't get me wrong. I mean, Jason was a freak athlete, as you can see. You know, he ended up being with Hall of Fame tight end in NFL, but he was one of those great guys, man, that could do it all, man. And then the other one was a guy by the name of Cozy Coleman. He played defensive tackle with me as well, but <laughs> after the first two days, you know, Coach. Brooks, you know, they always do evaluations of guys. I mean, if they can switch it this way or put them this way, if we got too many players on this side of the ball, and we put them on the opposite way. Well, Cozy, Cozy was a guy that was so strong, man. When he get his hands on you, couldn't get away at all, man. That's why I keep saying he's the best offensive line, you know, after Bur- Brandon Burstworth. Those two guys are two good guys. I mean, you know, I practice with this guy every day, and that's what made me so good as well. But Cozy, man, I'm telling you, man, no one – ever can get past this man, man. This is one of those great, strong offensive linemen that you never believe he was that strong, man. He was a great guy, man. They don't make offensive linemen like Cozy anymore, or oh, at least no. you, don't, you, don't, you don't see him. But I'll tell you uh, uh, not so much a story about Jason Witten, but a, uh, an ex- a personal experience with him. I think it was 96 um, – Maybe been 95, I honestly can't remember. But when he played for Elizabethan High School up here in northeast Tennessee, they mm-hmm. came to Greenville to play us. And I don't think the coaches knew it for Greenville. And I know Ken Sparks didn't know it for Carson Newman because he came to scout Witten that day. And me and my dad sat right behind Ken Sparks. And Witten didn't play in that game. And it took everything my Greenville Green Devils had to beat Elizabeth in that day. And I'll tell you how good that dude was in high school. We all know how good he was at Tennessee and how great he was as an NFL player, but it started in his high school days. We saw Elizabeth again in the playoffs that year, and he was back healthy. And they beat us like 40, I think it was like 45 to 6 or something like that. I mean, he he just made that much of a difference. So uh, I, I'm sure he made a lot of a difference with you guys out there on the practice field. You know, maybe even as a young guy, Billy. It's stories like like what you just said with with Jason and Cozy. Those are the things I can't wait to to talk about. Oh, man. And a lot of great people. A lot of great people wearing that uh, VFL moniker, aren't they, Billy, that people these days don't know about. And, you know, people have got the wrong impression about our, our beloved Vols. 
And if, if they were around back in the day, back in the 90s when you played and when so many of those other guys played, they wouldn't be talking all this smack they've been talking because they know it's coming back around, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's it's coming back, man, because I, I still tell these young guys now, they, they, they always talk about Alabama. And I'll say, guys, I'm undefeated against Alabama in my career, man. Those guys didn't have a chance against us when I played ball, man. It was totally different. That was neat. That was that wasn't even a opportunity for them to even win when I played. <laughs> <laughs> How would you great. fare against Georgia awesome. there, Billy? This is a little bit of a rhetorical question, but how would you fare against the Georgia Bulldogs? Because these Georgia fans have overrun the Volunteer Road Show. Just, just a little bit oh, of a reminder. Man. <laughs> Those guys, man, I, I, I love Georgia, man. Those are, they, they're good fans, man. I mean, every time I've been around the Georgia fans, they've been nice to me, been great to me. But that's another school I never lost to either, man. Undefeated against those guys, man. I mean, I think the only school I ever lost against was the Gators, man. You know, those guys were I always had my coaches' numbers. I always had my coaches, but my coaches never really put us in the right situation to win some of those close ball games that we had. But it 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 was what it was, man. I had a good time against them, man. Georgia, yeah, you guys are on top of the East right now. But I'm telling you, my ball is coming back eventually. Man. Tell them, tell them. <laughs> they coming, I'm telling you. Hey, so, so keep barking now, because we're gonna have our old smarky, old smoky barking soon. Before you, I'm get... curious, Billy. Bef- uh, real quick, I- I'm curious. How were you a Tennessee fan before you were recruited by Tennessee, or you know, because catfish and myself, man, I- I've been. I've been bleeding orange since the first time I was cut when I was like six, seven years old. And I always wonder that about a lot of the Tennessee players, the the guys that that weren't from around this area, if, if they had a little bit of orange in their blood or, you know, did you get the, did you get the juice when you stepped on campus? <laughs> well, I, I tell you this here, man. I, I, when I came out of high school, I didn't know anything about college football, man. I, I think the only players, in college that I knew anything about was Steve McNair out of Alcorn and Barry mm-hmm. Brooks out of Florida State. Everybody else was pro players. I didn't I didn't know anything about going to college to play football, you know. My parents always told me, you know, go get education. But once I did get to the campus, the University of Tennessee, yes, that's what got me. When I got here and realized, you know, all the guys that was here in my class that was recruiting me, we all felt like family, man. That's what made me come to Tennessee. It was never anything about the football at all. And I can probably can vouch for that for, for the majority of my 95 class of 95 that, that signed with Tennessee that year. Wow. These are going to be yeah, that's, great, that's, great it, stories. I can't wait. I can't wait till me, you, and BVD and anybody else we can get to come there. But BVD, you always you – know, I wouldn't be here without you. I appreciate it. But I've got a couple of callers. I've got Crying Ryan, I think, is on hold. We're going we're gonna to let Billy rough him up a little bit. But I appreciate you calling, <laughs> buddy. Yes, sir. Always good to talk, and I can't wait to uh, – to chop it up with you guys some more. I'm gonna get Billy on the BVD TV show here in the next in the coming weeks. He just he just don't know it yet. And if, catfish man, that we got it before I get off of here. We got to know, man. Did you swallow a, a peach pit or something, man? You sound like Barry White over there. No, I, I think it's my microphone. I... <laughs> that fixed. All right. Well, you. You have a good one uh, this afternoon, Bobby C., and I'll be talking to you later on tonight. And, Billy, fantastic to meet you, my brother, and I can't wait to talk to you more and talk to you on the phone and and get to know you a little bit more and work with you some. Yes, sir. All right, my man. It was good talking to you, too, my man. Have a great afternoon, guys. All right. I I want you to take care of my light work, Billy. I've got this – Florida fan. What's going on, Ryan? What you got for Billy? Well, hi. I'm Ryan. I'm young, so I never got the pleasure. That's what they've been telling me, to watch you play, Mr. Atlas. But yes, sir. I appreciate that you're a football player. And I've heard a lot from BVD and Catfish about you, how much of a legend you are. And, you no, know, I like to say thank you from them. Because they appreciate you exploding their vocal cords. 
Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you're a Florida fan. Billy never got to be. Well, he only got one one victory against Florida, wasn't it? How, how many times you beat Florida? Yeah. Billy? We only beat Florida once in my career, man. That was '98, man. We when it all counted. But that's that's the only that year the that only. mattered was 1998, and I was there, right? And you probably wasn't even born yet, but that was a great, great, great day. What was it like going down to the swamp? Was it like what they say it is on TV, Billy? It is all that it is hyped up, and it is every bit of it, man. One of the toughest places I ever played, but one of the best places I love to play in, you know. The swamp, you know, you know the crowd was gonna always be in it, man. They made sure you paid for it, whether you was that you was winning or you was losing. They made sure they let you know that, man. Especially the fans that were sitting behind our bench because it was about two feet away from the from us right there. They was always on your neck, man. It was it was fun, man. I I loved it. Can y'all hear me now? I had a little bit of oh, uh, yeah. audio. What you you got yeah. a question for uh, Billy? What you got for him? Talk a little smack to Billy. No, I'm I'm too scared to man. Talking <laughs> smack to you and BVD and nothing but I'm actually scared. He might actually like hurt me permanently. No. <laughs> <laughs> he knows oh, a man. lot more. He knows. I think he knows a lot more to talk back than you do yeah yeah yeah. not saying that you don't know a lot but he, he kind of lives the moment well before i let you go right i want to say you know i give you a lot of grief on here and you've been following me from pretty much the beginning and i'm still gonna rag you i'm still gonna smack you around a little bit but i'm just glad you watched the show and don't stop giving it back to me that's all i got to say but Anyway, we're going to grab another call. Thank you, Ryan. I hope Are your grades still good over there at Farragut? Yeah, they're fine. You don't have a girlfriend yet. Don't get no girlfriend. You're too young for a girlfriend. You don't have a girlfriend, do you? It's football season. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ryan. Thank you, buddy. Uh, don't, put him on the, don't put him on the spot on the radio now. <laughs> Well, we're going to go to one of the biggest supporters of the Volunteer Road Show, Georgia fan Shane Bentley. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing well, guys. How about you guys? Doing great. Uh, we're doing great, man. Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, I'm not <laughs> – sorry. <laughs> I'm kind of recovering from sickness myself. Uh, but I'm probably not that much older than Ryan. Uh I w- I'm going to say, Mr. Reckler, first off, it's very, actually very honorable, uh, or should I say it's an honor to, to speak with you. Uh, I, I, I became, I kind of got into the college football uh, scene um, kind of a little bit after, probably when you were done, because uh, my first Georgia shirt that my family gave to me was when Georgia first beat Tennessee after all that time Tennessee dominated Georgia uh, mm-hmm. in all the 90s. Uh, it says, "Hey Tennessee, who let the dogs out?" Because that's the, that was the biggest song during the time. So uh, uh, that kind of shows my, my uh, where I came from. But uh, I'm, I'm gonna say it's kind of interesting, uh, Catfish. I will say, uh, or should I say, to, to uh, Mr. Relative as well. I'm a Georgia fan supporting a Tennessee broadcaster, and I'm a Falcons fan living in Charlotte. So I'm making some terrible sporting decisions currently. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I must say. But uh, um, one thing I did want to ask you, Mr. Reckless, because I uh, uh, definitely, uh, for Philip Homer, uh, respect the guy. Uh, I knew that was the coach uh, during your time. Uh, I just want to ask you, how was it to play for him? What was what was your your experience during that time? Oh, man, it was great, man. Coach Fulmer was a great guy, man. It was one of those. Things where, you know, you, you, you think about having that father figure away from home and stuff like that. You know, he kept it real with you, man. He didn't, he didn't sugarcoat nothing. Now, I say, if you ever did anything wrong, 
I guarantee you're gonna pay for it on Monday. So you're, you're, <laughs> when, when you know, like when, when fans used to see my coach on the sideline, you know, he's doing that little that little clap thing. Yep. Yep. Uh, right. <laughs> we didn't like to see that clap thing because we knew what that was gonna be when it came <laughs> on Monday. Because we knew somebody don't did something wrong, and if one of us did it wrong, everybody did it wrong. So it was. It was he was a great guy, man. He was a good good coach to um, play for, man. He, he meant business all the time. You know, Billy, he always uh, gave me uh, the the impression that he was like a lo- a father figure to a lot of those players. Is that how it was in the locker room and on the team? He was coach. Coach was a good guy, man. He was a good coach, man. You know, he he took care of his guys, man. When when we was there, you know, he. You know, to this day, you know, I, I call coach and he'll stay on his phone right now and say, how you doing? Or, you know, say happy birthday and things like that. You know, coach, I mean, that's, that's what I'm saying. He's good to be good for the program. I'm glad he's back over there, man. That's something that we miss, man. And I kind of wish it had happened a lot sooner. But, you know, good things come to those that wait, man. So I'm hopefully everything going to be fine. Well, before Shane goes, kind of give the most memorable b- moment playing them Georgia Bulldogs when you played. Oh, man. That's so All of the <laughs> oh, my God, man. There's so many memories, man. I think I, I want to say what? Probably, uh, what year? I was probably say 98. You know, the year where, you know, they was loaded. You know, they had Quincy Carter, you know, Hines Ward, you know, all those guys. And I think they was undefeated at the at that time too and I remember them you know being ranked and I think everybody thought they was going to beat us as well and of course you know it was one of those teams where we felt like hey that's just Georgia man you know let's, let's, you know, let's go out here and do what we do and send them home with the tail between their butt and, and keep on running man. <laughs> we, we just had uh, guys, man. you know it was kind of those teams back then man where we called it a stat gang you know what I'm saying we trying to get sacked <laughs> Tackles for losses, <laughs> and hopefully we get out without any injuries, man. It was it was it was fun, man. It was fun. <laughs> Goodness. Goodness. <laughs> uh, well, you got anything well, else, Shane? Yeah, just three quick things. Uh, one, uh, I was just going to say, I, not to bring up uh, bad news, but I, I know there's there's two people uh, that we all in common do not like. Uh, one is Lane Kiffin, of course, of how he left Tennessee, and then. Also, that one time he was in Tennessee, he beat Georgia, and I was like, how the heck did Georgia lose to this guy? Uh, <laughs> two, not to make Ryan cry, but we all hate Steve Spurrier because cause he's Steve Spurrier. Of course, we hate him. Uh, mm-hmm. Then last, lastly, this is gonna, I'm going to end it on, on a rough note, but I saw, I saw that your number was 40, and then I was like, well, if he added one more number to that, that was the number that Georgia won the last time they were in, in Knoxville. So I was like, eh, not too bad, not too bad. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but I kid, I kid. Uh, but it was, it was it was a pleasure to jump on and, and uh, speak with you, especially uh, uh, because uh, that that time of uh, '98, uh, kind of going into the early 2000s, that's when I was getting into college football. So it was cool to speak to someone that was playing during that time. So I appreciate the time, guys, and y'all, y'all have a good rest of the day for sure. Well, I appreciate it, Shane. You've always supported me, uh, not only with super chats but Patreon. But you've been commenting and supporting my channel and I, it means more than you'll ever know and i and i'm telling you it means a lot and i really appreciate you buddy no problem but thank y'all y'all have a good one all right buddy i told you billy we've got florida fans georgia fans all kinds of fans calling in to talk to us and i see somebody commented a uh, hound dog one of my moderators wanted to know uh let me go back up here and look at this question. But before I do, I'm going to give some shout outs over here on Facebook. Kelly D. Reedheimer, uh, how you doing? Nashe Callahan, Brett Barfield, uh, he had to go. And JT Stronghold, um, he says, honestly, Billy Ratliff, in my opinion, won the 98 championship when he recovered the Sterner fumble well he, he was definitely an integral part uh jt but there was a lot of people that that won that there was just so many ebbs and flows in that season and i appreciate everybody on facebook watching me but hound dog wants to know uh what's it like what did you, what did you think billy about getting t back on the coaching staff and have you talked to him oh, man. well i haven't had a chance to like 
specifically talked to him about him being back. You know, I saw him, um, uh, I think it was about a weekend ago. He was out hanging out. Um, had a little um, fundraiser we was doing for um, Juice Davis, um, Tennessee legend um, camp thing. And um, I saw him at one of the nightclubs, and we spoke for a quick second. But um, T, I think it was a great hire, man, you know, especially for the community. You know, everybody loved T when he was here, man. It was one of those guys that, that, that believed in family, and, and, and I think T is – it's going to be a great guy, especially for recruiting. You know, yeah. T is a very personal person, man. Everybody loves T, man. You talk to him, he's genuine, down to earth, and he gives it to you just the way it is. No sugar coating when it comes to T, man. And I think those kids will buy into it. You know, you got that many players, coaches on one team. Eventually, everybody's going to come together, and that team is going to evolve, man. Well, I, I want to get a, t a subject out of the way because I want to put it behind us, but I hadn't had anybody that really had a player's perspective to give their opinion. And I really don't want to mention his name anymore, but we're going to mention it today. Butch Jones. Give everybody on the Volunteer Roadshow what Billy Ratliff was thinking during his tenure and how you felt things went there. Oh, man, that's, that's a very long story. Story there, man. But I keep it short, man. You know, I'm the type of guy that, you know, if I don't have anything good, I don't normally say anything about people, and that's that's normally the way I am. But I'm gonna make an exception this time. But I'm gonna keep it keep it kosher, you know. Yeah. Coach Jones. I mean, when they when they hired coach, you know, I still to this day, I don't think he was the guy that we needed at that time. You know, I know when we hired him, I know it was more of a band aid to kind of. You know, stop the bleeding. You know, when 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 Chiffin and all these guys did us and everybody, but I still don't think he was the guy because he was the guy that was too, uh, too nitpicking. He didn't really attach to the kids the way you want to attach to the kids when you're when you're coaching guys like that. You know, this is a very high caliber school when it comes to, to volunteer line. This is the SEC. It's totally different in SEC. You can't treat everybody the same way that you treat other places. Yes, he, he coached at a high level, but when he came to the SEC, I think this ship was too big for him in the first place. Because when you have a coach that has an excuse, excuse, and excuse, and I don't know how many bricks he had. You know, it's just, it was too many bricks for me. You know, and I, and I said when he, every brick he put up, I swear he could have built built more with that many bricks he had, man. You know, I thought he should have been playing basketball with those bricks, but, you know, it's a whole other story, man. You know, when the kids, when you got kids transferring from your school, you know there have to be some type of issue in there. You know, I, I, I used to point fingers at coaches up until I started coaching myself because as a football player, if we're talking X's and O's, guys. If you can't go left, you can't go right, you can't go back, you can't go forward, you can't play this game. But if a coach tells you to go left and you go go left, there's going to be problems. Yeah. But Butch, he just didn't give him that option, man. It was one way and one way only. You know, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't understand compromising when it comes to human beings. You have to be able to negotiate some things and not just fire off and just leave it like that. You know, you, you got young men here that like to be treated as young men. But yeah. when you begin to treat me as, I say, you know, an infant or a child or call me out my name and things like that, things things get, get a little bit bad. It's like things that I heard in that situation at, at that time, if he would have did that in my era, I personally think we would have had a couple of guys that would have had a couple of assault charges. Yeah. That's how bad it was in that era of the Bush Jones situation, I think. Well, this is what's going to be so good about having you as the co-host of this show and doing some other content we have planned because you bring a different perspective that, you know, we fans think we know what's going on in that locker room. We think we know what's best. You know, we we think we know what, what call we shouldn't have called and, and all that. But you're bringing a different perspective. And, and this is just going to be fantastic for the fans to be able to hear a player's perspective 
you know, every time we, we queue up a live show. But I'm going to go to the calls. Got Vol General, another longtime follower of this show. Uh, what you got for Bobby and Billy there, Vol General? You hear me, Catfish? Hey, buddy. Yeah, we can yeah, hear I you. Got a question. Mm-hmm. My question. Yeah, my question is, uh, how did Coach Fulmer recruit you to Tennessee? What do you try to sell to you? Do you get you to come to Tennessee? Well, I, I, I go back and I still say this, man. Like Coach Fulmer, he was a great recruiter. You know, he knew how to how to close the deal. You know, he was one of those guys that that made everybody feel special. You know, what I'm saying when you're pitching to a kid, you got to give them all the stuff that you got to have. You fill that bowl up with things that the kids love. And, and it's hard for you to say no when you have Coach Shulman sitting across you with those 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 big beady eyes, and he asks you, "Are you going to come here? You know, we're going to treat you like a young man. You want to go to the NFL? You have an opportunity. You know, you got to just stay that way." But the thing that got me to come to the University of Tennessee, and I keep telling everybody this every single time, it was my teammates. These guys, man, were were just just part of it, man. They was ninety percent of the reason I came to Tennessee, and the reason I'm still here in the state of Tennessee. When these guys told me how it was gonna happen, when I got here, the way it was gonna happen, it was all that it meant to me. When these guys told me these three things here, they told me, "You come to the University of Tennessee." You will have a chance to go to the NFL. You stay healthy, stay out of trouble, you go to school. You have an opportunity. I didn't get to make all three of those pieces. I got hurt. The other two, I made it okay. But the majority of my teammates I played with, that recipe is what helped each and every one of us, and that's the reason why each and every one of us came to the University of Tennessee. Well, I tell you what, there was a lot of players on that you played with that had some good careers in the NFL, wasn't there, Billy? Oh, yes, man. It was a lot of guys. We had a lot of guys back then, man. We were, you know, I, I tell people that too, man. We were basically, in a sense, Florida, Tennessee were the Alabamas back then. Yeah. You know, we There was no one that could, you know, if whoever won out of Tennessee and Florida the SEC, that was a wrap. You had Sean Ellis? I still remember him get, returning that touchdown. <laughs> I, I think they probably had to oh, call the ambulance after he ran that. I thought he uh, probably gave him so much man. oxygen. Well, did y'all rag him about that after, after that play? Oh, man. We still ride him, man. My teammate, Jeff Coleman, you know, he was a um, defensive tackle, too. You know, he was from South Carolina with Sean Ellis, you know. And he was, you know, Sean, he was, he was wild at that play, man. He did have a lot of oxygen. Now, I remember that play, Sean running it back for a touchdown. And, of course, you know, everybody, we jogging up next to him, trying to get in the end zone. I'm like, man, if you ever going to get in the end zone, and think of me, there was no one for me to block. And if you go back and watch that play, I just went and tried to find somebody to hit that was way back in the other end zone just to do <laughs> something. And that's how long it took for me to get to the end zone, man. Right? It was uh, funny, man. <laughs> For you young bucks, that was against Auburn. And if I remember right, it's been a long time ago. It was at Auburn, wasn't it, Billy? Oh, it was so hot, man. I mean, everybody had to get oxygen then, man. It was it was probably the hottest day, you know, since even when we played in um, the National Championship game over in um, Tempe, man. It was hotter than Arizona over there, man. It was that hot. I mean, I think he, he didn't next that day. I think they said it was like 102 or something like that. BVD's asking in the chat there uh, to ask Billy about B, uh, Bill Duff. He said, Duff's one of my all-time favorite unsung guys. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Duff, man. Duff, good guy, man. He was one of our good players, man. One of my my guys I looked up to, man, that taught me the position, man. He was he was a, 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 a different breed, man. He was one of those very strong wrestler-type guys, man. He was a great guy, man. I've never a good thing to say about Mr. Duff, man. <laughs> yeah, I remember Duff. <laughs> what was it like playing next to Darwin Walker? They say he was strong. Was he really as strong <laughs> as they said he was? Oh, man. Darwin was the strongest 
guy I've ever seen, man. Actually, we had two guys like that, man. Was, we had Ron Green and we had Darwin Walker. Those two was competing with bench press and stuff. You know, they throw a 500 pounds on bench press like it was nothing, man. You know, I, I remember this, man. Even like that Arkansas game, you know, me and, me and Darwin, we, was, you know, we both played deep the tackle. And Brandon Burdsworth, the guy from Arkansas, you know, I try to switch positions with Darwin and go to the right side and play this position. I said, Darwin, man, hey, I think you can beat this guy, man. As strong as you are, man, I think you can run straight through him, man. I promise you. He said, hey, let's, let's, let's switch, man. Let's switch. You know, that's how Darwin talked. He had that high pitch where <laughs> it was just, it was so funny, man. You thought it was like a, if you didn't see him, he, he, he spoke softer than a lady would speak. <laughs> but he meant business when he was doing it. So I was like, I thought, let's switch, man. So he switched over. He went over there and, and he, First play, he came back to the other. He said, ooh No, man, he was a switch back over, man. I said, come on, man, you can do this. And we switched back, man. He said, man, that guy was so strong. His strength wasn't working a day. I think that was Zeus he was going against, he said. <laughs> but, yeah, Dawn was a good guy, man. He was one of those guys, man, that, that you always can depend on, man. I, I used to call him, man. It was like one of my best friends when we was in college, man. Great God. Man. And he had a good career. Didn't he go to the Eagles? Yeah, you know, he got drafted. He got picked up by, um, what was it, um, Arizona. And, you know, oh, they traded it? him um, to the to the Eagles. And, and the Eagles, that's the one reason I think I still like the Eagles to this day is because of Doug Walker. Yep, 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 yep. Did When you were playing, did you ever have anybody uh, come to the practice like an old legend? I always wondered if anybody got to – meet Reggie White. Did he ever come into town and did you ever oh. get to meet him? <laughs> oh man, Mr. Mr. Wright, man. One of the greatest, greatest, greatest mentors that I ever had. I ever had the opportunity to just share advice on the practice field and teach us things that we didn't really think we, we knew we can do him. Yes, he came back time to time, man. You know, I remember him coming back to speak to us and everything and Remember him coming out on the practice field and giving us advice, telling us things to do to try to get past guys. And every time he told you to do something, it always worked. And I was like, man, who is this guy? I mean, this guy knows his stuff, man. He's the real deal. You know, and that's another thing I say that that's missing at our universe. That, that was missing when Coach Former left. You didn't see that same sense of urgency of yeah. ex guys coming back. You know, I remember. I can be in the weight room working out. You never know who's going to come back and be working out with you. Reggie White, you know, you, you see all types of guys come back, man. It, it was it was fun back in those days, man. And I just wish, I'm hoping that it's coming back. I hope that, you know, Coach Former, let Coach Pruitt understand that, you know, if you do that, which I know Pruitt knows that. He had it at Alabama. Those guys still come back to Alabama the same way, and I hope he bought, bought in with that and, and welcomed those guys back. Well, that, those are some good stories, and I can't wait to hear them. But, Vol General, I've got about <laughs> two or three minutes, and we're going to have to end this thing. What else do you got for Billy? Yeah, just one more question. What was your relationship like with John Chavis? Oh, man, Coach Chavis, man, you know, he was a good coach, too, man. He was a tough coach. He meant business, man. You know, it was it – was, you know, every now and then you get a smile out of Coach, but it was rare, man. But, you know, Coach – you know, because when I came to Tennessee, you know, I was actually recruited as a middle linebacker. And, you know, that was my coach when I first got here. So I got it firsthand to see, you know, how he coached. Now, he was, he was, you know, I used to call him, man, he was the devil himself, man. He was going to be on you like white on rice, man. He was going to keep the heat on you 24-7. You know, whether you didn't like it or not, I don't care who you was. I don't care if you was the first team player to the worst player. You're going to get whipped the exact same way, man. And, and to this day, Coach Taylor is exactly the same way, man. You know, I miss having those type of coaches over there, man. That's what I'm hoping that we got back. And I know Coach Form understand that, that process of having coaches like that, man. So, yes, Coach Chief was one of the best ones out there, man. He's still doing his thing. Well, so what Chief at now? I think it's on Arkansas, but. Yeah, I'm not sure. Chief went. But yeah, he, yeah, he's still here. But I know he's he's one of those great coaches, though, man. Good coach. 
All right, Vol General, I've got to get out of here. I, I've got trucking to do. Everybody knows I'm, I'm doing this show from the truck. i got Billy helping me out. He's going to do some by himself uh, in the future. But I tell you what, if y'all want to get some good content uh, on YouTube, hit that subscribe button and that bell notification, and you'll be notified every time we upload a video. we still got other contributors for the channel. Um, and on Facebook, like and follow us and share it and everybody that calls in is going to have a chance to talk to to billy he's going to be with us through thick and thin i hope for a long time i hope we go to the old folks home together billy but it's been great our first show together we're just going to try to keep getting better that's what we we promise that to you don't we billy oh yes sir man hey you got to get rid of me, man. I tell you that now, man. Hey, you got me feeling good. Hey, I feel like I'm getting recruited by Tennessee again all over, man. Well, that's, that's, that's good to hear. But anyway, everybody, those that have been watching me, y'all know what's coming next. Thanks for tuning in. Go Vols. The Tennessee men's basketball team, we didn't get to talk about them today, but they're going to the Final Four. I promise you that.